Red Sonia undertakes Kulan Gas's quest to find the soul of a god to stop a war, but she'll need the help of more than one god to find it. Uh, we're going to talk about it right here in our review of Red Sonia, Volume 7, Number 11 from Dynamite Comics. See you in three. Seconds to recap what happened in the previous issue. Grace died by inhaling the mist from Kulan Gath that he unleashed on the Eden or the Emberfall army. Red Sonya was sent into a rage and she stormed into the Citadel to try and cut Kulan Gath down. She got pretty close to it and then Kulan Gath says, wait a minute, if you want to stop the war, you're going to have to stop the gods that are at the heart of the war and to do that, you need to find his soul. I can help you do that and I can tell you where to go, but if you kill me, it's not going to work. Plus, you don't have the strength to kill me anyway. But all of a sudden, Kulan Gath is encased and overtaken and his entire citadel is destroyed by plants and trees and roots. And what we find out is that Grace, when she died, went to the afterlife and she was imbued with the power of a nature goddess that has now returned. That brings us up to speed in issue number 11. Red Sonya goes out of the citadel to confront this resurrected version of Grace who has now become some kind of nature goddess with the power to have all of nature, rocks, trees, water, you name it. She can see through it and control it and do whatever she wants with it. Grace roughly and just briefly remembers that the whole reason she was on this quest was to find her kidnapped missing sister. She reaches out to nature and through her sight beyond sight, she finds that her sister is safe and in the company of an old woman. And Red Sonia says, look, if we want to stop this war and it, all, all the devastation will cause on nature, you need to help me when the time comes. And Grace agrees and disappears, ready to be called upon when the time is right. That gives us an opportunity to connect with Grace's sister, who is accompanying an old woman that is headed out to the mountains. The old woman takes out this huge hammer and bangs on a door that appears to be covering or encasing a cave built into the mountainside. When she hits on that door and creates this loud clang noise, it, wake up, it wakes up a squadron of giant mountain trolls with the intention of taking those mountain trolls and adding them to Ember Falls military force to help defend against the coming army invasion from Emir and his hunting gods. We cut back to Red Sonia, who's gotten on her horse and is set out on the trail looking for the soul of a god, which is El El Erlich. Erlich is the name of the god. And she has no idea what it looks like, where it is, but she's just headed off. Eventually, she crosses uh, a large crowd that is gathered in front of an inn, and they all say that there's somebody inside who can see the past, present, and future. He's some kind of mystic man with shiny black glowing eyes. And, she, and Sonya recognizes, oh boy, it's the gatekeeper. So she goes in, finds out, yes, it is indeed the gatekeeper. And she gives him a good verbal tongue lashing for all the trouble he's caused because he was the one that opened up the gate, the gateway between life and death and, and allow all these gods and sorcerers and all these demons and monsters to escape. So she said, you're coming with me and we're going to go find this all together because this is your fault. As Red Sonia and the gatekeeper travel the long, dusty road, the gatekeeper, who is effectively a type of god himself, explains the nature of the gods that have been let loose and what they're trying to do. Ymir is the god of the hunt. He doesn't kill for sport. He doesn't kill, for, or I should say, he doesn't kill uh, for greed or revenge or, or any of the things that would mostly be human con uh, conceits. He kills because he loves the hunt. And that is why he set up this army because he's doing essentially a mystical, magical god hunt that combat for its own sake. Meanwhile, the god whose soul that Red Sonja is trying to find, his name is Ehrlich, has never known what it is to have a soul because his soul has been taken and captured and used and abused by men throughout all of history. And then by finding the soul and giving it to Ehrlich and putting the soul in him, then they can stop him from uh, committing acts of war and violence and destruction against humanity. Red Sonia and the Gatekeeper eventually reach the, reach the outskirts of Emberfall and they see that the big battle is about to start. You have Emir and his hunters and all the gods that are with them, including Ehrlich. And on the other side of it, you have the army of Emberfall, bolstered and supported by the mountain trolls summoned by the old woman. As they're watching this scene unfold from the top of a cliff, Kulangath arrives and he says, 
I knew you could do it, Red Sonia. Congratulations. And she doesn't quite know what he's talking about, but if we suspect what we think we suspect, uh, we know exactly what's going on. And that's the end of the issue. It ends on a weird note. So let's move over to the technical aspects and starting with the, with the character work. Uh, even though the title says Red Sonia, the two big character development pieces that happen in this issue are the gatekeeper and grace grace is now resurrected into some form of nature goddess she has sight beyond sight she can control plants and animals and even the air and the water she is a formidable power that could well exceed kulan gath to some degree we might, we don't know how it's going to come into, to, into handy later presumably when they get to some kind of climactic battle we'll find out but she's definitely a force to be reckoned with, which is very, which is a very big upgrade for her. The other character that gets a lot of play or meaningful play is the gatekeeper. He is sort of happy to interact interact with humanity in all their good and ugly points. Uh, so he's all about the pleasure and the pain and everything that's going on with humanity, how they kill each other, how they love each other, and all that good stuff. So he's helpful because as they're he's walking with Red Sonia, he provides some expo exposition to explain the nature of the gods that are part of this particular story so he sort of acts as the exposition machine if you will uh, but and he also contributes to the plot because he is one of the central characters he was responsible for or the catalyst for letting the gods loose and also may play a part in whatever happens next let's move over to talk about the artwork walter giovanni's art is looks good looks great I would say uh, it's a pleasant you get mythological gods grounded taverns some bloody violence not too much uh, but overall it's just a really solid well done uh, comic i would just say as a well, as a point of warning this comic is not safe for work because there is a love scene between the, the gatekeeper and a barmaid if you will because he's partaking of all the joys of life and so there's definitely some not safe for work stuff going on here just something to be aware of if you pick up this issue um and also uh homie romalante's uh, coloring is excellent you get a lot of good highlighting shading and contouring with the coloring in this issue let's move over to pacing and structure and that's kind of where the issue starts to fall apart a bit torn grombeck's Pacing is steady, but it's steady, I would say, to a fault. There's no rise and fall. There's no momentum. There's no buildup and payoff. It's just a sort of a steady hum. It's almost a like a flat tone that just sits there. Uh, it's kind of strange because the gatekeeper in, in his dialogue talks a lot about he's enamored or just fascinated by the urgency of humanity. This comic has no feeling of urgency whatsoever. Things are happening, but they're just ha sort of happening in an order with no no energy behind it. Uh, the structure, when, it's, when we're talking about the plot structure, is just lost. There are so many different things that are happening at the same time that, that they're mixing bits of Norse mythology. You're mixing subplots with Grace becoming a nature goddess. You're missing, you're, you're getting subplots with this gatekeeper as he's enjoying life. Through him, through witnessing it through humanity, then you have this war involving Ember, uh, Emberfall and Emir, who's the god of the hunt, and then you have Kulan. Get there are just so many different subplots and tangents and plots and all these things coming together, but there's no focus. Where what is the main plot? If you ask somebody to describe the main plot of this issue, you, you'd get you'd get maybe blank stares or just a lot of confusion. Is Kulan guess whatever he's doing the main plot? Is it uh, is it to seal the, that open portal between life and death? Is it to stop Elric and Emir? Is it, where is it? If, and it, right now it seems to be all the above. Torn Grombeck has lost focus and you have no focus. You don't know where to follow. And so everything feels mildly important. It's all contributing towards something, but there's just, it's just a, a jumble of not quite chaos, but just too many things that just are happening together, but no real cohesion and no real sense of direction likewise the theme kind of falls apart because there is no clear-cut theme because there is no clear club clear-cut plot Grombeck is just trying to do too many things at once uh, and nothing gets proper attention you're trying to do all the things all at the same time nothing feels focused so if there's no focus there's no way to tell what the what the theme is because we don't know what the story is or the plot if that makes sense we take a step back and look at the bigger picture. Uh, Grombeck is really pulling in a lot of aspects of Norse mythology, especially uh, the names of the gods that uh, come into play, the, the designs of the characters that Walter Giovanni pulls together. It has a very Norse Nordic 
kind of feel to it. Now, technically, Red Sonia is, is hails from the northern steppes of Hyrcania, which in actually modern times and on a real world map is is sort of an, as an outside area of Iran, modern day Iran. So it's not Norse. So although people would say, oh, Red Sonia, she probably comes from Norse mythology. No, she doesn't. Uh, so that's a you know, common mistake. I'm not sure that's necessarily a mistake here. But when you're mixing these two mythologies from very different or different enough parts of the world, it's an interesting mix and aesthetically it works, but uh, it, it is a bit of an odd combination. Final thoughts, what do we think about Red Sonja Volume 7, Number 1? You get a um, classic adventure with snippets of Norse mythology, um, some unique adventures, and very, very good-looking art. Uh, the issue comes in with the pacing, which is completely devoid of urgency and energy and direction, and the plot, which is trying to do too many things at once, and the whole focus of the story is completely gone. You can't tell with any reasonable certainty what is the main plot and what are the subplots that are supporting it there is no subplot because there is no main plot because everything is given equal weight and it's all happening at once as unclear what is connected to what in in what capacity and which is more important so it looks good it's visually interesting and there's some pieces in there that make sense but when you put it all together it's a jumble mess therefore we're going to give red sonya volume 7 number one from dynamite comics a six out of ten what do you think of this series? Are you reading it? Are you following along? Are you enjoying it? Or do you think it's like we do that it's kind of a jumble mess? Let us know in the comment section. I want to hear from you about this. Also, like, share, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned through the outro for the next review.